I'm gonna make this quick this year. I'm raising money for Johns Hopkins Children's Center because they saved my oldest daughter's life twice. And my youngest children were in a NICU in a hospital that's affiliated with Johns Hopkins. So any amount of money that you can help me raise really means so much to me because it really, my daughters would not be here and my son would not be here without Johns Hopkins Children's Center. So um, you'll find links below and um, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. It's time for Eric checks out always sometimes monsters again. So um, hey, last time I got interrupted uh, when I was uh, playing this game, and so I'm gonna do a rare two-parter on the Eric checks out. <coughs> um, so just waiting for the game to load up there. at the Phoenix. I think I remember from last time they told me to see the manager on my way out. <laughs> what a strange night. I still can't believe Viper showed up like that. Maybe we should stick around for the concert and help with the go check. Again, Miss Ter Terry Lager did ask for my help. I suppose seeing what she needed would be worthwhile if I'm more than a little late. They're still waiting in line. Again, Dark F did mention I could worth the code check and I could use the money. I think this would, lady was gonna pay me more money. Who could that be? Hello, who's there? That's me, Becky. Oh, come right in. Hello, Miss Tower Ledger. I'm here to help clean up. Oh, you're a little late for that, Becky. It's all right, though. I managed to get it all done myself. Still, I'm very glad you came. You're such a good kid. Well, then, I guess you don't need me then. I was just about to sit down to dinner. Would you care to join me? Hmm, still gonna work the code check down at the club. Pretty hungry, though. So, what's for dinner? It's a fresh lamb stew. You're gonna love it. Come and have a seat. We wouldn't want to get it cold. Sounds great. You won't believe how hungry I am. Well, there's plenty, so don't you worry about it if you want seconds. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you say you were expecting guests earlier? Don't tell me I'm the only one who came. Oh, I never explained, did I? Tonight's my beloved Thomas' birthday. Every year we have a special little dinner together. I tidy up the house like he prefers and make his favorite meal like an old-fashioned stew. That sounds really nice. When's he coming? Oh, well, he's not exactly. Thomas is my husband, but he's not with us anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about, Becky. We had a wonderful life together, and he's still with me every day in my heart. Glad you're here, though. Sometimes today can make me feel a little emotional. It'll be nice having someone else to talk to for a change. That's cool. Glad I came to this lady's house. Salad? Hush, it's good for your digestion. You'll get your stew afterwards. Appetizer. So glad you decided to join me. It's nice to have a young company for a change. Oh, it's no trouble at all. It's my pleasure, really. I appreciate the kindness, Becky. It can be kind of lonely living alone these days. Well, considering I have a microwave most nights, it's a real treat. Did that roommate of yours cook very often? What was her name? Joanne, wasn't it? Oh, we did out more often than not. We were both pretty busy, you know? I understand. Life can get pretty hectic nowadays. Life sure does move a lot faster than when I was your age. How long has it been since you last saw each other? I always remember she was so polite. We bumped into each other nearly every morning as she was heading out the door for a morning jog. It's funny the things you miss about a person can be what you take for granted. The cool parts that you never know you're doing it at the time, but such is life, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. I really do miss her quite a lot. It's been about a year since we last saw each other, and I still don't feel the same. Believe me, I understand how you feel. When you're so close with someone, their absence can be hard to deal with. 
I won't lie to you. That sadness you feel now may never go away. You're luckier than I was, though. You still have an opportunity to mend rift. Oh, I don't know about that. Life's changed a great deal for both of us since we parted ways. John's not even the city anymore, I don't think. She seemed, she seems she wanted to get as far away from me as possible. A decision like that can be made in an instant, though. Who's to say what it really means? For all you know, Joanne could be regretting leaving just as much as you could. I'm not sure that's true. And then things between us ended rather roughly. There's a reason we don't talk. A lot of feelings were hurt. Probably past repair. Be that as it may, you're not a mind reader, Becky. A good friendship like the one you had doesn't die so easily. Actions can be mended and feelings can be healed. The only thing that truly divides people is time apart. You can't be so sure. You know what's going on in someone else's heart unless you ask them yourself. I suppose you're right about the time apart. Not even sure if she's the same person anymore, to be honest. When I look at how much I've changed in the last year, I can't imagine trying to stay the same. Oh, well, you've changed less than you think, Becky. Call me no senior, but I've watched you come and go in this building for a long while now. Tell me what you think is so different about you, you today versus a year ago. Honestly, I guess I haven't changed. I'm still working hopelessly on the same project and getting nowhere. I'm still living like I'm a college freshman. You hit the nail on the head. I've done nothing with my life since Joanne left. Being the same person you were a year ago doesn't have to be a bad thing. Unless you think it is. I like that the cat's just walking around everywhere. Don't forget, it's Joanne who was friends in the first place. Yeah, but it's also who she left. Main course. So how are you enjoying the stew? It's really quite good. What's the meat in this? That's fresh lamb. I got it from the butcher this morning. Feel free to have as much as you want. I got used to making rather large pots of it. Every time I'd make it, my Thomas would eat at least four bowls just by himself. There were never any leftovers back in those days, I'm afraid. He sounds like quite the character. Do you mind me asking how you and Thomas met? It's a funny story, actually. It happened the summer after I finished high school. He was working in a garage near my house, and my father hired him to fix our old jalopy. <laughs> I like that picture. I wasn't working at the time, so when my father asked me to pick up the car for him, I had no choice. I didn't even have a license at the time, so I was getting terrified the whole day, imagining myself getting it home. Well, that certainly sounds safe. How'd you get away with driving illegally like that? It was a different time back then. We didn't worry about little things like that. I was scared, but it wasn't going to stop me. I hated disappointing my father, so I showed up to the shop, scared out of my wits, and there he was, covered in grease and sweat, a real man's man, if you know what I mean. Thomas could tell immediately. I was clueless and must have asked me if I needed help a dozen times. I was stumbling over myself with how cute he was, so I just kept telling him I'd be fine. I wanted to get him as quickly as possible before I said or did something embarrassing. I was so distracted thinking about him that I crashed straight into a stop sign barely 20 feet away. Hmm. Thomas says we are charged right over to see if I was okay. There wasn't a scratch on me, but the car was in pretty rough shape. I was terrified to get in trouble with my father. He'd have been so mad to find out what happened. Thomas, in my dismay, offered to fix it for free and tell my father he needed more time with it to keep me from trouble. His only condition was that I agreed to go with to dinner with him that weekend. Hmm. Of course, I said yes. The rest is history. So, I'm not quite sure I understand the title of this game. Are these people going to end up being vampires or something? That's funny like that, isn't it? Was it the accident that drew us together, or was it our attraction that caused the accident? Sometimes I think this was just meant to happen, you know? Something you two were made for each other. What was your life food time was like? It wasn't perfect, but they were by far the best years of my life. I traded all the ones I've got left for just one more lazy summer afternoon with him. Hmm. <laughs> the background is the picture when she met him. When we were young and everything was new to us, all we needed was our love. It didn't matter if we were poor or hungry as long as we had each other and were happier than pigs in mud. We had such grand dreams for our life. We planned to travel around the world, see exotic places as a pair. Eventually, though, the bills started piling up, so Thomas started working longer hours to make ends meet. There were times when we'd have debt collectors knocking on our door and I wasn't sure we'd make it. I thought myself foolish for being so idealistic in our youth. Reality hit us a lot harder than we expected. I resented him working so much, even though I knew it was necessary for us to survive. He would be frustrated with every mistake I made, fearing how far it set us back. The stress of it all would cause us to fight over the most ridiculous things that we scraped by. Still, our love was a strong, strong enough that our attention always faded once we wanted. We'd always make up and vow to double down on our efforts to make our dreams together come true. We stalked away hoping we'd have a few extra pennies to put away at the end of the month, but we never got far. As we got older, things got easier, but we were too tired and beat to do anything about it. So you just gave up on your dream like that? We were comfortable and happy together. Eventually we realized it's all we wanted. It didn't matter where we were or what we were doing, just as long as we were together. Besides, it's more than a little impractical just packing up your life to change a silly ideal like that. Sometimes I regret it though, especially when I wonder where we might have been when we started enlisting. When I think about it, it's hard not to get angry at myself for not trying harder. But then, how are we to know? I'm sorry, it's a very painful story for me. So Thomas was drafted in the war? How did he die? 
I don't really like to talk about it, but it's a fair question, all things considered. It just makes me very sad to talk about it. I'd really rather not. I can only imagine how painful those memories are. Never mind the question, then. Forget I said anything. Thank you, Becky. Let's try and focus on the happy times today. Yeah, sure, no problem. Dessert. I just love ice cream, don't you? If you don't hear me complaining. I've had a really nice time this evening. I'm very happy you decided to come by. It's no trouble at all. Glad I came too. Still, I want to thank you for spending time with me, so I have something for you. What's this? These are my husband's baseball cards. He used to collect them when he was a boy. Some of them are quite old and they're probably worth quite a bit of money. I want you to have one of them as a token of my appreciation. Keep it as a memento. I'm sure someone will be happy to pay you for it. Can't be serious, can you? Please, I know how much you could use the money right now and they're not doing me any good. They just sit in that box. I can't even bring myself to look at them anymore. I won't take no as an answer from you, so don't even make a fuss about it. Just don't trust myself not to get all weepy if I see which one you're taking. So I want you to pick by the time I return from the washroom. Just close up the box when you're done and we won't say another word about it. Understand? Yeah, I understand. Right then, I'll be back in a moment. Wow, these cars are really ancient. I bet they're worth a small fortune to Riker Lecter. Well, she did invite me to take one. Be rude not to, I suppose. Hope I made the right decision. Thanks again for having me over, Miss Tewa Lodger. You're more than welcome. You're such a good kid. Here, take this with you. Some leftovers from the dinner to eat later. Young person like you needs to eat. Well, you won't pay my bills, but it's better than eating junk food. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself and have a good night. It's getting late, so I'm off to bed. All right, then. Good night. So it's nighttime. I should count up my pennies and see if I can get my rent paid. Between the 100 I got my wallet and the 13 of the bank, I've got a grand total of 113 to pay rent. That's not enough to get me back in my bed. Making a scratch together a few more bucks, but it looks like I'll be sleeping under the stars tonight. Better go and find a comfy street mattress. Let's see if the uh, pawn shop is still open. Those girls aren't standing out there anymore. Huh. Where's that pawn shop? There we go. to the club. Hmm. Oh yeah, this place. Oh, well, let's see. Getting close to, I'm gonna end my uh, my playthrough. I'm sure there's a something I could do at this point in the game, but it uh, seems like a good enough point to uh, stop. Um,
So um, the game is kind of neat. Uh, seems to be telling a pretty interesting story. Um, don't quite understand why it's called what it is or why it started the way it did uh, last time, but uh, there you go. So uh, I'll leave it on my to playlist, but uh, I'm not going to be in any hurry to get to it, I don't think. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.